Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this claw set up, uh, glued together with the plastic piece in here. Um, I got that bottomed out. I'm going to leave it a little bit long for now. I can always trim it back later. So I'm going to cut it about right there. Um, to beef this up, since it's going to have a uh, metal pin that, that gets drilled through the middle, I'm going to put another piece of uh, styrene rod in the middle uh, just to beef it up a little bit and glue that inside of it. So, let me cut that off also, about right there. So, I'm going to glue that into there. And then this into here. Um, I'm using some uh, Plastruct uh, solvent cement can be used on ABS, styrene, butyrate, uh, and acrylic to itself and each other. Um, there's different types of cement. I've also got styrene and ABS, which will bond styrene to ABS or styrene to styrene or ABS to ABS. Um, different types of glues for, or cements for different types of uh, projects. I should, I'll probably just use the styrene to styrene. Trying to see if I've got an open one. I'll just use this one. Trying to find some newspaper to lay down, keep it a little bit of clean. The only thing is, is this really messes up the video, doesn't it? Ah, this will be fine. All right, first thing I'm going to do. is I'm going to glue the rod inside the rod. Pull that out a little bit. Let it, it'll wick right in there. In this instance, I like to use quite a bit. And then push that in. There we go. Alright, and then... That up about doesn't have to be exact, but it's got to be close. This is a piece that's going to be driven by a servo. I want to make sure it's strong enough to uh, hold together. Now I think, actually I probably didn't want to do this yet. I probably wanted to drill the hole. 
trying to think how hard it's going to be to drill a hole in the center of that. Yeah, let me, um, I don't want to put that in there yet. That's the nice thing about this. It takes, it takes a little bit. Which the more you use, it takes longer to dry. Um, but you get a really good bond. If you just put a little dribble on there, it'll hold it, but... Since this is going to be driven by a servo and... It, it, you know, I want it to be strong. But, um... clear that off a little bit all right I'm going to uh, drill a hole in this first this one. Um, and I should probably make two of these at the same time same I want the hole somewhere about right there So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make two of them. I don't know if any of you have ever used this type of cement before. Um, it's nice to have it right next to you. But more than once, once this lid is off, I have accidentally knocked this bottle over and spilled the entire contents. It'll mess up a lot of shit. I made this little block of wood. The glue sits in there and it can't tip over. Just a little tip. Um... Let me go ahead and do this. Put that in there. I'm pressing this down against the surface and then pressing the tube inside so that they, they're both flush. So, oh, right there. Now, I could drill this by hand. First of all, I'm going to need a piece of music wire that I'm going to run through here. Um, so I know the diameter of the drill bit I'm going to need. I've got... Uh, got some really small drill bits. Let me grab the piece of uh, music wire real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, I've got a uh, small piece of uh, one millimeter diameter music rod here or music wire. Um, and the drill bit, uh, I'm going to use 0 0.97. Um, see how straight I can get this by hand. 
Sorry about the view right now. Hold on a sec. Let's. Uh, basically going through um, it doesn't have to stick out a lot on each side I'm going to make a mark on here so I can cut it accurately and then use these uh, nippers these are a uh, special tool by, uh, God, I don't know if they're Excel or, but these are made for cutting music wire. Uh, they will cut a range of different sizes, uh, different tools for different sizes, but this one, this one looks like uh, Exolite. Uh, 1340G? I don't know. But it'll cut this music wire without a problem. And you line this up in the center of the jaw here. Let's see, right about there. If you use regular um, diagonal cutters to cut music wire, you really will screw up the, the jaws and put... Uh, Some good dents in them. Alright, so we got our first one here. I push this through again. Alrighty. That's about that's about what I'm looking for. See that? And basically what I'm going to do here is now this brass rod, which is going to have the servo horn that's already been trimmed down, as we saw in the last video, um, this goes in this end of the brass tube. And we'll be able to sit on the servo. This brass tube, I'm going to cut this, and then it'll have two little slots that'll slide over this. And the, that wire will go into those slots. This 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 will allow me a little bit of adjustment. It doesn't have to be an exact length then to make it work. Um, so let's see here. This wire will have to be C8 in here. probably trim this down a little bit more but we'll leave that for now so okay so I've got that in there let's go ahead and get this back in place a little bit all right I guess we can put this together now
clips around here somewhere. Let's see. But yeah, it's gonna work. Probably should use regular cement on this, or regular model glue instead of this liquid large surface area to join. But yeah. this will work. Now on this, it's going to sit in here. The servo. See with this uh, slotting idea, I don't have to be super exact on the length of this rod. It's not as precision. If, if I made this a solid piece, all the way with with the servo horn this would have to be an exact distance but since i'm going to use this rod we can kind of get an idea it doesn't have to be exact now what i'm going to do is Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, things. Somewhere about right there. Cut this by hand, or do I want to use the uh, you know what? Where is that tool? Here's 
Here we go. This is a handy device. It's actually made, I think it's Harbor Freight, um, but it's a cutoff saw, I guess made originally for arrow shafts, but it works great on different types of tubing and See how it does on this. It's a little bit of a rough edge, but it, it, it leaves a nice cut, nice straight cut. gonna slide over that just good. I'm gonna have to deeper the inside of that a little bit. Yeah, this should work. Just sticking a file in there. it down a little bit. I've got another file that's around here somewhere. Gonna go around the edge here all the way around several times. There we go. Nice fit. Now I need to cut the slot in the brass and I'm going to do that, let's see that's one millimeter, I'm 
I'm going to use my Dremel real quick. Um, give me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. I went ahead and put a, uh, a slot in the brass piece. So now, see how it slides on there? And it, it won't rotate when it engages that, engages that pin. So at this point, we're going to take the servo spline and put it into the end. Let's see if I can get it. To, there we go. Press that in. That will then fit on the servo. So I'm going to put a drop of CA down in here to uh, glue that in and a drop of CA in this hole so I can glue this pin from moving. I'm going to use really thin CA so it'll wick down in there and uh, put a little bit, put a couple drops in here. Wipe that off keep your CA bottles clean because they'll clog up and muck up real quick even when you try to keep them clean I'm gonna use a uh, piece of wire here it's not very uh, strong easily pliable bendable um, I kind of like just make a little loop out of it so I can have something to hold on to but it acts like a precision applicator where I can just get a little bit of CA on the tip of this there we go. so then what I do is hold this out a little, there we go get some CA on the tip Making it down in there or not. Find out in a minute. Seems like it's getting there. Maybe I'll set that aside. And now this one. Trying not to get any on the walls up higher because uh, I'll have to use a file to sand it back down so it'll fit over that other shaft again. Don't need much, just need enough to listen to me. I say I don't need much, and I'm going after over and over and over. Um, not a lot of CA gets on this wire. There, that ought to be good. Yeah, that wire's, that's good, that's good, okay. So we'll let this CA dry for a little bit here. 
it's already solid in there. I just don't want to get any on anything else. And I don't, definitely don't want this to get glued to that. So we'll let that dry for a minute and uh, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, the glue is dried on these and I've also hooked up a temporary wire. These wires have to run all the way up the arm, through the body, down the feet, and then the base. But uh, these are just temporary, just for right now, to, uh, to test the operation of the servo and see if it rotates the uh, wrist. I still haven't cut the second arm yet, so uh, we can just hold these together to test it to see what uh, what's going on here. So basically, this piece now is going to slide on here, and of course it 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 see how it can be a, it can be adjusted. You can have it. So the servo position doesn't have to be exact in this direction. It can be a little bit off. The servo horn, you can see how that slides on there. And now, I'll fit this into here. See how that's in there. See, by having these these slots in here and this pin allows this servo to have a little wriggle room back and forth this way, um, putting it together so that it's not under strain. Um, it seems a little, it looks pretty good in there. So if we put this. Uh, temporarily together you can see uh, let's grab the uh, receiver and plug this in and see how uh, see how we do okay make sure none of the wires are touching I know I've got bare wires here all right Here we go, testing it. Seems to work all right. Maybe binding just a little bit. There we go. So we can get a good uh, full 90 degree turn out of that wrist. Looks like that's going to work pretty well. It'd be awfully nice to be able to have the uh, gripper open and close too, but uh, <coughs> I think it could be done. It'd be uh, it'd be pretty difficult. What we're we're already attempting is going to be pretty substantial. So we'll just stick with the rotation here, the elbow and the uh, upper and the shoulder. All right. 
So that works. Um, pop this uh, back out for now. Set this aside. All right, so we got this done. All the cleanup needed after we glued it together there. Everything's pretty solid though. All right, so the next step, uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and cut this sec this the other half of the arm, and um, then I've got to finish the design of the piece that I'm putting in here that will allow it to pivot the pulley wheel assembly. All right. So basically, right along that edge. don't want to use a saw really because a saw would leave too wide of a kerf in other words it would uh, it would remove too much material a saw would remove probably what a 64th of material so that the pieces wouldn't fit together as well now I'll use a saw down the sides that's okay at that corner and that corner, which will just come in here. to know you're going to get cut eventually. <laughs> That's a little nip there. Alright. Uh, here's what I do. A little piece of tissue. Put that on there. And a little piece of masking tape. <laughs> And that'll keep us from bleeding all over the place. All right.
doesn't have to be perfect. I'll sand it afterwards. Completely, but we'll go in there and remove some more of that. Clean up where the sprues were. saying probably the hell he's cutting towards his finger always cut away well the thing is you've got much more control cutting this way I've been doing it for years you gotta you're not giving full force you're using this thumb to pull forward but you're also using I don't know part of your hand to hold back it's kind of I don't know how to explain it I've always done it that way. Yes, I've cut my thumb tons of times. Always, it'll probably happen soon, and I'll have a bunch of different slices in my thumb, but it's no big deal. All right. Oops. Keep getting out of frame here, aren't I? All right. 
got to uh, clean that up a little bit more. And then I'm going to need to finish my design and 3D print it. I've got some uh, bearings, roller bearings coming tomorrow. And uh, the assembly in here is going to have a couple of bearings in it, one on each side, uh, to allow it to have a little bit smoother movement. Um, part until I get that piece made. That doesn't look too bad. This, I need to do another cut on here. see sort of what I'm going for and these don't I had to cut out the pins for this one uh, because of the the way the arms gonna work but so when I glue it together I'm gonna have to be extra careful on a lot of this stuff these these mating pins sometimes get in the way uh, if they're on the outside edges they're pretty cool but if they're in the middle they get in the way of what I'm trying to do but all right, so basically, this is going to fit, and you can see how I how I want it to work. So I'm going to make a piece that comes out of here with wheels on both sides. Those wheels. Um, will get glued on the insides of this arm. They'll be keyed, and it's hard to explain. I'll, I'll show you when I get it done. But, uh, it's going to allow. me to uh, place the glue the piece in here and the wheels on each side come off because they're just, they're just a slide fit onto a square shaft um, which because what, what what has to be done is to put this together this one's gonna have to come in from this way this one's gonna have to come in from this way and they'll slide onto that square shaft. So I'll um, have little keys in here. Um, again, once once I get to that point, I'll show you the pieces and show you what I mean by how, how it's going to work. But it, it's not just making the things; it's it's the assemblability. You you got to look ahead at several steps to to plan things out. Otherwise, you'll paint yourself into a corner, and you, you won't be able to. You'll be like, oh man, I need to do do this first, and then this second, and then this third, and you have to do things in a certain order, or you you will paint yourself into a corner, and you won't you'll, you'll be screwed, and you'll have to either you know undo what you've done, take it apart, rip it apart, or you know I bought two kits, so I've got two kits that I can make mistakes, but. All right, so we got that cut, that cut. So now I need to uh, see this will go in. Um, this goes in like this. Get this straight. 
straightened out. And this goes this way. So once this is together and this moves, see how that will actuate? That would be pretty cool. differently. Do something to center that up. I mean, it's not going anywhere, but it's just... I'd like it to be centered, and so it, if it goes over to the side, it can bind a little bit. These don't stick in very far, so when that's all the way over one way... I might put a pin through there. All right, well, uh, that's it for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up that 3D design, and that will be in my next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, subscribe, maybe. Have a good one.